So today I wanted to talk about, I think my favorite tree in all of the state of Florida, and that is the Southern Magnolia, Magnolia grandiflora. So Southern Magnolias are a common tree in pretty much most of the state of Florida, north of say like Manatee County on the West Coast, Polk County in the center of the state, and not totally sure on the East Coast. But they are a temperate evergreen hardwood. They grow to about 100 feet tall in their, you know, ideal growing conditions, particularly up in north and north central Florida. Um, they like slightly acidic soils. They are evergreen. I said that already, I think. But they... Everybody knows about the blooms that Southern Magnolias make that are beautiful, that they make. Typically, the peak bloom is around May. Um, sometime in May, around Mother's Day, right around in there. So, a few things I wanted to mention here. This tree is growing on the edge of a kind of a floodplain swamp here in Pasco County. And it's a really good specimen. I apologize, it's a little windy, but this is a really ideal specimen that I wanted to show that shows what the natural growth habit of a Southern Magnolia is. This tree is probably 60 feet tall. Um, this is one of the most polluted gene pools of any native tree in, in the landscape at all. You find, you don't find many of the actual native genotypes growing in the urban and suburban landscapes in Central Florida. You'll find them in there's hammocks and stuff like this, but even then you'll find some of the, uh, what I would consider to be the polluted genetics. So the trees naturally have a very upright growth habit and small lateral limbs. Um, if you get a close look, they have this sort of smooth bark that's really beautiful to me. And when they get older, you can see the cambium expansions get like these little cracks and like gets it plated. Um, this tree has actually got two stems that are coming up. This tree is pretty old. I would probably say this tree somewhere in the neighborhood of you know, 40, 40 plus years old to be sure. Um, I mean, if we look up into the canopy of these trees, it's just, they're absolutely gorgeous. They have big leaves. They cast beautiful shade. And this is really showing their natural branching habit really well here. They get strong laterals that come off a of main apical stem or apical stem. These trees are extremely wind resistant. As you can see. <laughs> but after major storms, Southern Magnolias are one of the trees that typically sustains very little damage. Um, that in southern live oaks. So, back up again here. As I was saying before that the genetics of southern magnolias are pretty polluted. We have a lot of cultivars that are widely used in the landscape like a D.D. Blanchard and the Little Gems here in central Florida. <clears throat> and I wanted to show, you can see this tree, the way the foliage looks and the growth habit and obviously the size. But I got some leaves from some that were in front of a shopping center here. So this is the foliage from one of the trees that was in front of a shopping center. This is a D.D. Uh, Dee Blanchard, I think. It's hard to tell. I'm not 100% sure. It may be a little gem, but it's a cultivar. This is the foliage off the native tree. So you can automatically see a tremendous difference. And one of the things you'll notice is that if you flip the leaves over, the way to tell sometimes the leaves aren't so different in size but look at the bottom of the leaves all the cultivars that I've ever seen have this fuzzy velvety brown sort of underside of the leaf whereas the native trees just have it's very much like the top of the leaf it's all green there's no fuzziness to it so when you find trees in the woods that have this fuzziness to it it's a 
good sign that they're not they're not the native phenotype here in Florida so in my opinion you should plant a southern magnolia a native type in your yard in your landscape they're fast growing particularly when they're young you know I have some trees that have grown in three years they've grown probably more than seven or eight feet at least you know from planted them as two three foot tall seedlings and now they're 10 or 12 feet tall <clears throat> so southern magnolia again one of my favorite trees and they're pretty easy to propagate from seed and grow from seeds so if you find a tree like this that and you do find some of these the seed pods on the ground see if i can find an old one here there's one of the old seed pods i'm sure you guys have seen these if you live in florida around the landscapes but the seeds have this really wonderful wonderful smell to them and they're coated in a red flesh so if you remove that red flesh and then stratify them cold stratify the seeds in some like moist vermiculite for about 60 days or so they'll germinate pretty easily um, but it's hard to find nursery stock that has uncontaminated genetics you know so in my opinion it is one of the greatest trees in all of the southeast for urban landscapes they're just beautiful and the, the the fragrance of the flowers in the summertime is really unmatched by <laughs> any of our other native plants pretty much so again magnolia grandiflora southern magnolia it is a amazing amazing tree for any native landscape and the native genotypes are the ones that will get tall like this and turn into a full-size forest tree so i can't recommend it enough again they like they're pretty adaptable but they like a lot of organic matter in the soil and they like music sites not super dry, although they can adapt to some pretty dry situations. They can also adapt to some pretty wet conditions, too. So, it is an amazing tree, and they are very, very long-lived as well. So, again, Southern Magnolia. Check it out.